Yesterday was a big day for America. The inauguration of President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris represented not only the most quintessential facet of American democracy, the peaceful transfer of power, but also a new dawn for immigrants, refugees, and the communities that support them, both within our borders and on the national stage. The organization I lead, Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service, has seen firsthand the incredible pain and suffering that the last four years has caused to our immigrant neighbors. The previous administration's policies were nothing short of a war on immigration. And while we cannot undo the incredible damage done, the trauma of family separation, the lives lost in immigration detention, the fear of the children and families living in squalid conditions just beyond our borders, this is a moment for hope. On day one alone, President Biden has already changed the lives of hundreds of thousands of immigrants. He signed executive orders that repealed the Muslim ban, protected dreamers, halted border wall construction, extended protections to Liberian nationals, and ensured undocumented people are counted in the census. The Department of Homeland Security has also issued a 100-day pause on most deportations. It's telling that one-third of President Biden's first executive orders were focused on immigration reform, and it's only the beginning. His comprehensive immigration plan will soon be introduced in the Senate as U.S. Citizenship Act of 2021 by Senator Bob Menendez, himself a child of immigrants. This bill includes an eight-year path to citizenship for undocumented people and automatic green card eligibility for DACA recipients. It includes provisions for more immigration judges to alleviate the massive case backlog and funding for alternatives to detention. It addresses the root causes of migration in Central America and prioritizes humanitarian aid and local refugee processing centers to protect asylum seekers. This legislation, if passed, will allow undocumented immigrants to step out of the shadows and claim their rightful place as Americans. It will acknowledge what we at LIRS have long known to be true, that our country needs immigrants. After all, three-fourths of undocumented workers are essential workers. It was immigrant founders and CEOs who developed the vaccine. Immigrants are essential to our economy, to our culture, and to the soul of our nation. It's well past time for them to be treated that way. I'll be honest, passing such sweeping legislation will not be easy. But despite the harmful rhetoric and vitriol of the previous administration, popular support for immigration has never been higher. Nearly eight in 10 Americans agree that immigration is a good thing for our country. A Fox News election day poll found that more than 70% of Americans support legal status for undocumented immigrants. There is reason to believe that reform is within reach. There is reason to fight harder and to take our advocacy further. And there is also reason to celebrate. I'll never forget the feeling of watching Vice President Harris, a woman of color and the daughter of two immigrants from opposite sides of the world, take the oath of office. I'm sure that there are thousands of little girls, thousands of children of immigrants including my three-year-old daughter, Alana, that won't forget it either. The work is renewed and just beginning. The immigration system was broken long before the previous administration took office, but it finally feels like we're on the way to transforming it. Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service will be there every step of the way. Join us.